Free Morgan Foundation, so myself and Rosina Liska, both board members, went to Loro Parque um, because we had ongoing concerns about the welfare of these animals, as we all do. And we were only there for three days, but what we ended up with was a report that is uh, 68 pages long. And um, we could only see the animals during the shows. And even from that, we were able to ascertain that there were major, major issues and that the problem at Loro Parque is escalating. It's not even stable there, it's, it's getting worse. So one of the things that we found was that, um, oh, and, and this report is available from Free Morgan, so you can go on the website and just download it. It's a PDF there. And one of the issues that we found was that Morgan's teeth were getting really, really badly destroyed from her stereotypies, her abnormal, repetitive behaviours. And if you look at this tooth, this is her right side, tooth number five. You start from the front and you count your way back um, when you're identifying the teeth. And it's split in half. And um, this was of great concern to me and I asked the uh, head of the orca department, a guy called Dr. Javier Almunia, uh, who had arranged a meeting with me and Rosina, or myself and Rosina, and two veterinarians. Now the reason the meeting was arranged was because I sent him an email about my concerns because um, every time we walked into the facility, they were moving Morgan into the medical tent. So we couldn't take decent photographs of her. I grabbed this photograph within the first two minutes that I arrived and it was the only decent photograph that I got of her. Uh, and after that, every time we went anywhere near her, they moved her to the medical tank. So uh, I expressed my concerns in writing to them and they said, well, there's nothing wrong. Um, yeah, you can have an inspection of her and we'll have a meeting with you. So we met with them. Um, the inspection involved her swimming in the main tank. They would not station her. They would not um, ask her to do any behaviours for us so we could see her um, properly. And I specifically asked them about this. And their reply to me was um, that there was nothing wrong. Now this is the written quote, but the verbal was pretty much the same. And you can find this on their official blog. Now, either they're blind, they're dumb, or they're being paid a lot of money, or they're very, very afraid. Because to me, uh, how can you say that she does not have any broken teeth? And this is the evidence. And remember, I'm taking this from the public viewing area. This is not something that I have had special access to. So the veterinarians are every day supposed to be checking these animals. Every day they are supposed to check them. And they're saying that there is nothing wrong with her teeth. Now, um, for me, a broken tooth is also one that has chips. And if we look at this one here, this one's chipped. This one's chipped. This one's really badly chipped. This one's chipped, this one's chipped, that one's fractured, and we can't even see what's going on on the other side. Nine broken teeth, yet they say there isn't a single one. And if you look at the, what's happened to Morgan's teeth over time, so the, the time, uh, the date, is in reverse. So year first, then month, then day, and then this is sorted chronologically. And the numbers increase as you go down because that's the number of teeth that now have some form of damage on them. And you can follow R5, the fractured one, all the way through those as well. So this has happened in three and a half years. And yet they're saying that this is normal wear and of course it's only an abrasion. Now to me, if, if you understand the term abrasion, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, as a medical doctor, an abrasion is something that's typically on the surface. Um, it wouldn't involve fractures like this, breaks. Um, so there is something really, really wrong here. Now, additionally, there was a veterinarian who made a um, written report, albeit pretty scant on details, but seven months earlier, and he said in his written report that Morgan had two broken teeth. Two, seven months ago. Now teeth in orca, just like us, they do not spontaneously heal, they do not spontaneously regenerate. So if she had two broken teeth seven months ago, how come 
Loro Parque is saying that she has none now. And if you do two broken teeth in the written report and then you have me saying that there is at least nine broken teeth now, what happened? Was the vet back then lying? Was he also paid a lot of money or was he very afraid? Or has there been a dramatic escalation of problems and between two broken teeth and nine broken teeth in seven months, something is really, really going on there. So either way, either scenario is not good. So we have written this report, we've sent an open letter to SeaWorld and the Humane Society, and we've said, come on guys, wake up. We want a meeting with you. We want you to address these problems. We haven't heard anything back from them yet. Now, for those of you that don't know the history of Morgan, I'll just do a very, very quick primer on her. She was captured off the Netherlands in 2010. She was transferred to Dolphin R.E.M. Heart of Eight to this tank. Now, this was tank um, was used for dolphins, but she was put in there. Um, and she was in there for 18 months. And the reason that she was moved out of there was because the tank was too small. Now, it looks like she's got a disjointed head because of the refraction of the light, but um, that's the actual depth. Now, the reason she was moved was for two key principal things that they applied, that, that they said the reasons were. One was for the tank was too small and the other one was so that she could socialize with other orca. So she was moved to Loro Parque in Spain with the other orca and supposedly into larger tanks. And yes, they do have larger tanks there. Um, there are major dysfunctional problems with this group. You would know from Blackfish that Keto, the adult male, uh, has killed a trainer there, but there are other very, very aggressive instances that have happened there. Then um, this is the uh, Google image of the system, and you will see the medical tank there. Now we have evidence that Morgan is being locked in there for 70% of the time. That's seven zero. Now this tank um, is actually physically smaller, but remember, this is now three years on and Morgan <coughs> has kept growing. So if you look at Morgan here, this is the medical tank with the floor raised. This is one of, uh, both of these come from the Loro Parque official blog. And you can see the small size that that system is. 70% of the time that we have been able to observe her, she is locked in there. And if you look at her proportional size now to the size of the tank, you will see that um, the depth again is still shorter, shallower than she is long, and the width is only just longer than her. Now, you also have to remember, of course, that an animal, you might talk about something being 1.4 times her body length, but she takes up one body length. So there's actually only 0.4 of a body length for her to move. Right? People forget that. They say, oh, it's five times their body length. Well, there's only four body lengths for these animals to actually move in because they take up that space. So I think that that's absolutely criminal, disgusting, and inhumane. And we have pretty much said exactly that in this report. Um, we have evidence of more than one orca being locked in the tank. So there's Morgan, Tokoa, and Aiden. Uh, Tokoa is a sub-adult male who's bigger than Morgan, and Aiden is a, um, he's five and a half years old, so slightly smaller than her. Now, you can also see there is some rake marks just up here, those were um, done the day that I was there. They were fresh, probably in the medical tank, but we're not exactly sure. So we're taking these photographs from the stadium. We're about a hundred and something meters away from these animals. So we're using long lenses. Um, we are harassed continuously while we're in there. But remember, these animals are there, particularly Morgan, under a scientific research permit but we're not allowed to take photographs and we get harassed when we present things like this. Now, the other thing is that Morgan has um, a fungal disease. It has apparently cleared up now, um, but she has had it in her system. This is similar to what women get. It's the same genus. And um, when you hear of the 
disease thrush or yeast infection. Um, men sometimes get it as well, but it's, it's often prevalent in humans in your mouth, and particularly in humans and animals if you are given antibiotics. It kills the natural flora and fauna in your body, and then this fungus just blooms. Now, this was also the, the, of the same genus that killed Una, the orca at SeaWorld. So it's not just a fungus that you just go, oh, it's a yeast fungus, you know, whatever. This, this is serious stuff. And yet they keep saying that there is nothing wrong with what's going on at Loro Parque. They are the gold standard, to take Laurie's um, term, we actually want to do a gold standard for um, the whale sanctuary. But in this case, they're using these terms in, a, in an inappropriate way, like saying that this is education. Now we have got a little bit of a dilemma going on with Morgan at the moment because of course SeaWorld has said that uh, there will be no more breeding and we commend them for that. But where does that fit for Morgan? Because although SeaWorld claims her ownership, we have shown that legally they can't own her and we are still pursuing that um, avenue. And if any of you are interested on the laundering of Morgan, there's some uh, papers out on the Ecojoia table that you can pick up and it, it's got some information about the laundering of Morgan. So if SeaWorld isn't breeding with their males and Morgan doesn't belong to SeaWorld, where does that leave Morgan in this big picture? It's entirely feasible that Wolfgang Kiesling, the, the owner, so this is a private park. This guy is like John Holler. There, there is a um, psychological, uh, I don't know if, how to describe it exactly, but there's a term for these people and they're called animal hoarders. They hoard animals. And, and there are published scientific papers about animal hoarders. Wolfgang Kiesling is an animal hoarder. He's got thousands of parrots not only at Loro Parque, but his off-site breeding area as well. And um, so what we're concerned about with Wolfgang Kiesling is that he will either purchase a Russian orca or he will bring in sperm. So we are pushing at the moment um, for Morgan's permit, which was issued for her uh, transport. Remember you heard about the CITES permits from a few different people now. Well, Morgan has a CITES permit and that says that she can only be used for scientific research. She cannot be used for anything else, including shows, but she's in the shows, and including breeding, but Loro Parque says they want to breed her. So we're very, very concerned about that, and that's one of the things that we're pushing for with SeaWorld. Again, I asked everybody to start asking SeaWorld for this too. No breeding in any facility. It doesn't matter if it's SeaWorld or not, so that we can just shut this down globally. So if you want to know more about Morgan, um, there's lots and lots of information on the website. And uh, we have a new logo that was instigated um, uh, late 2015, I think it was. So um, after Superpod last year, and um, we think that this represents the situation at the moment, that you know she's sort of half in, half out, potentially we could do something. And who knows, she could be the very first orca that goes into the, the whale sanctuary. <laughs> some issues because she is a European whale um, but if they can send her to a facility like that and call it welfare we believe that we can apply for a permit that would send her to a true sanctuary. Alternatively we are also looking at um, and I have been up into Norway to investigate um, locations for putting a CPN in place in Norway and that would be the ideal situation because that's where her family is from. Um, yes there are uh, talks about her having um, hearing impairment and I want to stress Morgan has not been determined as deaf I cannot say that strong enough she has some hearing impediments um, she may be hearing impaired but she has not been designated even by the scientists in their scientific papers as deaf okay so let's just start from that platform um, and if she has hearing problems that does not preclude her from having a better life. That doesn't mean that she can't go into a sanctuary, that she can't be in something like um, Laurie and Naomi are working towards, well, a 
whole lot of us are working towards, <laughs> um, and to to have these um, the just the welfare for these animals improved so that they have some dignity and that they don't have to suffer what you're seeing here. Now, um, there is a number of different people doing really amazing things out there from huge, um, big projects and people driving around in amazing cars and people doing little things like these ribbons. Um, and I think Dean and a couple of others have been wearing them. I think Jeff had his on yesterday. Um, and so if you're interested in them, they're on Facebook. Two lovely, lovely ladies in California who have um, set up these ribbons. And it's a really nice way to, to get the message out there. And I've, the number of people that come up to me and ask me what this is about is quite incredible. So 